Here are all products of our past. When you grow up a middle class kid in Oakland or in Butte, Nebraska, you care about Social Security. You care about these things. When you're sitting down in Mar-a-Lago and you tell your rich friends, you're rich as hell, I'm going to give you a tax cut, it doesn't matter to them. And you know what? When my mom looks for that Social Security deposit to be made in her bank account, that's how she's going to feed herself. That's how she's going to get things done. He doesn't give a damn if his Social Security check comes or not. So let's be very clear. If any of our relatives or anyone gives us this, if they tell us, well, Donald Trump's understand us, that's bullshit. He does not understand it. He does not understand it. Look, you know it. I'm, all right, for the little ones here, I'm a teacher. I'm sorry about that. I didn't hear the way, so. Look, you know what we've got here. This issue, you've got it up on here. It's about freedom. It's about freedom. And I'll leave you with this. The freedom for women to make their own health care decisions. The freedom to drink clean water and breathe clean air. Those are the things. And I say this as a teacher and as a parent, the freedom to send your little ones to school in their best clothes so that they can go learn and be kids and not be shot dead in their classroom. I'm, I'm taking nothing on this. I'm a veteran, I'm a hunter, I went pheasant hunting last weekend, I own firearms. Kamala Harris owns firearms. This might be the, I don't know, President Clinton, this might be the first, this might be the first time that both Democrats on the ticket are gun owners right now. And it might also be the first time that the guy on the other side can't pass a background check because he has felonies. Look. There's another reason stakes in this election are so high, and you know it. Some of you hear this from folks in your life. Um, we made it through the first term of Trump. We could probably make it through another. I, I am an eternal optimist. I survived over a decade supervising the high school lunchroom. I'm an optimist. I am an optimist. But I genuinely worry for the democracy of this country. There is one political party now that is pro-democracy, and that's us right now. That's the truth. So all things aside, this is, this is truly serious. And I say this because someone I deeply respect, General Mark Milley, he was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the top military official under Donald Trump. And Mark Milley does not, he doesn't have time to mince words. This is a hero who's been out there and wore the uniform for over 30 years. He told us, on the record that he believes Donald Trump is fascist to the core. <laughs> Trump's plan to seize unprecedented power for himself isn't hypothetical. It's written down in Project 2025. And the rest is coming right from his mouth. Last week, one of Trump's closest buddies, who he pardoned, Mike Flynn, Trump, <laughs> Trump's former national security advisor, and he's a contender to be that job again in the White House. He was asked, he would ask, point blank, if he would lead military tribunals to carry out executions if Trump wins again. Mike Flynn answered, we have to win first. He followed up that to make sure that we understood just how batshit crazy he was. He said the gates of hell, the gates of hell the gates of hell, Mike Flynn saying this, my hell will be unleashed. This is the guy that Donald Trump wants to hand the keys to the federal government over to on security. So, so look, if there's anybody in your life who really meant when, they, when Donald Trump said he called for a bloodbath after this election, if they think he's just talking, I have to tell you this. You remember 2016, you remember the way he talked. This is not that Trump even. This is something much more deranged, something much more desperate, maybe to stay out of prison. And with J.D. Vance there, there are no guardrails around him. You know how he will vote. So look, Lord knows Republicans in Congress won't have the courage to stand up to him. So there's one way to stop it. We need to go vote and win the election and make sure none of this ever happens. 
All right. Look, hundreds, hundreds of Republicans out with Kamala campaigning. Who would have ever thought we would see Bernie Sanders, Dick Cheney, and Taylor Swift on the same ticket? Oh, there you go. There you go. So look, we got to do what Americans do on this. That rhetoric has no place. That is, the, that is the language of dictators. That is the language of totalitarianism. We need to go to the polls, clean his clock, and win this thing. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm going to finish because you're here for the main event. But you're here for the main event. But I want to leave enough time that if you don't have one of those stickers on, go vote and get one today. Today. If you're not registered, you can register today and vote today. That's what you can do. And if you're going to vote by mail, do that today too and get it in. So look, follow the instructions carefully because these guys want to do whatever they can to throw out ballots. If you, if you need to, you know what you need to do. Iwillvote.com slash NC will tell you exactly where to go, how to do it, how to fill out your ballot, and how to get it done. Go knock doors, go knock doors, go make phone calls, talk to your brother, tell him to quit voting the other way. If you want to, KamalaHarris.com, give a buck or two, knowing that in these battleground states, it lets us build out and get things like this going. So here's the thing. I'm going to turn it over to somebody whose accent might be closer to yours, a son of the South, speaking like a Midwesterner, a son of the South, a governor, a governor who went someone who understood small town. And I will say this, as someone who named his daughter Hope, the man from Hope who brought us that, all the changes that make a difference, please join me in welcoming our 42nd president, Bill Clinton. One thing to say off the bat, it's the people who say on the other side that Kamala Harris is an unknown quantity, a dangerous radical. Can you hear now? So all these critics of our candidate, Kamala Harris, they often say, well, she's an unknown quality. She's a quantity, she's a dangerous radical, whatever. The first decision she made was Tim Waltz. I think she did pretty good. It says a lot about what kind of president she'll be. First decision Donald Trump made was J.D. Vance. who now has defied countless courts full of judges, many of whom Trump appointed, to say, no, he didn't lose in 2020. Poor baby, the whole thing was rigged. And he had the gall to say in his debate with Tim that he didn't want to destroy the health care bill with its protections for people with pre-existing conditions. He was just trying to make it more sound. That was a whopper. <laughs> and there are probably 30 percent of the people in this audience, maybe more, who have family or certainly friends who would be affected if we got rid of the protection against charging people with pre-existing conditions more. That reason alone should be enough to defeat the Trump ticket 
in North Carolina.